the setup we used for parts A through D of our lab. Uh, we have our laser here, our um, beam expander here with the spatial filter and the microscope objective. We have a filter here to filter out some of the light. Our plano convex lens, which we can rotate around for the two separate parts of the lab. Our non-wedge shear plate, our shear plate interferometer to tell the, see the collimation of the light. A uh, ground glass screen and the place where we put our camera with which to take pictures of our fringe pattern. In this setup, we're using a polarizer to attenuate the beam from the laser because if we used an ND filter, it could introduce aberrations. So, this is some of the theory behind the shear plate interferometer. Um, if we had one with no wedge, uh, if the beam is collimated, then we'd be able to see just this blank pattern, and at defocused locations we'd see fringes, but they'd all look the same, whether it was inside or outside of focus. Thankfully, we had one that had wedge in it, so when it's at a collimated location, our uh, fringes would be in line. Um, if it's on either side, the angle would show where we are relative because it adds tilt into the system. So that made it easier for us to find where the better collimated location is. In the beginning of the lab we have a non-wedge shear plate here which um, takes is two parallel flat planes essentially and what it does is it interferes our beam from our beam expander with a shifted version of itself. This is creating fringes which we are viewing on this uh, piece of glass here and then what we did is we had our camera placed behind here so we could take a picture of the fringe pattern and we moved our collimation lens to defocus it and decenter it and then examine the fringe patterns and how they change dependent on these two parameters. For the first part of the lab, we started with a plano convex uh, collimation lens with the plano side towards the source. In this orientation, there are two fractions, and so we spec so expect less aberrations um, in the uh, plate. So as you can see right here, there are very little aberrations. Uh, next, what we did is we turned the lens around, uh, so the flat side is away from the source, and there's only one refraction. And so you can see here that there are more aberrations in the system. This is exactly what we would expect because of the telescoping nature of our beam expander. This is what happens to our fringes as we move the lens in defocus the beam that's coming out of the collimating lens. So this is what happens to our uh, fringe pattern as we decenter the lens. So in the second part of our lab we have a similar setup to previously but we added an additional uh, rail going this way so we have our microscope objective, our spatial filter, and our collimating lens as our beam expander. Then we have a pinhole just sort of to clip the very edges so that fits around our smaller mirror, and then we have our shear plate interferometer that is a tilted shear plate interferometer, then we have our reference lens, and we have our testing mirror. And right now our testing mirror's focal point is at the, focal, the back focal point of our reference lens. Later in the lab we'll switch out this reference lens for this testing lens, and in that part of the lab we're testing the lens itself, but in this part of the lab we're testing the mirror. Right now you can see the spherical pattern, and then now we're tilting the lens. And with a lot of tilt, it looks like defocus. Okay. These are the fringes from our reference flat, and then as we add tilt, the fringes look as though they become uh, defocused.